God. And that's what it's all about tonight. In Proverbs chapter 23, and it is believed that Solomon was the writer of these Proverbs. And he said, Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Say amen as you be seated. I want to title my message tonight, What Are You Thinking? What are you thinking? Sometimes people do things, and I think to myself, just what are you thinking? Or what were you thinking? Maybe they did an act or did something a man that they shouldn't have done, or that was just right down dumb. A man, you said, man, what were they thinking? A man, but that's really not what I'm going to preach about tonight on that aspect. A man, all then. A man, but I want you to understand tonight, a man, that there is power, a man, in thought. A man, in thought. Amen, or thought, plural, amen, exists within our intellect, amen, and in our consciousness, amen, amen, that's developed, amen, within, amen, our brain. Sometimes the Bible, amen, refers to the brain, amen, as the heart, amen. And the Bible says in verse 7 of Proverbs, amen, for as he thinketh, In his heart, amen, meaning his mind, his mind. Your mind is a powerful thing. It certainly is. Amen. I want you to understand the night, amen, dependent a lot of times upon how you are thinking will determine, amen, your victory. How many believes that tonight? Amen. I want you to understand that we as children of God are to be positive thinkers. Amen. We should be and must be. Amen. Optimistic. Amen. In every situation that arises in our life. No matter if it's sickness. No matter how bad the report is that the doctor has given you. Amen. No matter if the people around you are pessimistic. Amen. But we as the children of God are to always be optimistic, amen, in our thinking. I want you to understand tonight that if you don't watch, amen, you'll be as healthy as can be, and you'll think yourself sick. That's right. I want you to know there is people, amen, for some reason or another, kind of have that nature about them. I'm sure, amen, that you've talked to people, amen, and maybe you're describing to them, amen, what's ailing you, amen, and before you can get the words out, why, sister, I feel the same way. Or brother, did you know that's just what's going on with me? I want you to know that is the power Amen. And thinking there is power, amen, in thought. Huh? That's why the Bible says, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. You see, the Lord wants us to be happy. Whether you're happy or not, the Lord wants us to be happy. Amen. We are commanded countless times. In Scripture, to rejoice and be exceedingly glad, amen, and I'm 
talking about not just when we have plenty of money in our pocket, amen, or everything's doing well, amen, but, but when situations and circumstances arise in our life, amen, we need to sit down, amen, and begin to think about it, and most important, whatever the situation is, we should always, amen, think it through. Has anybody besides me ever been guilty of not thinking it through? <laughs> we all have. Man, I'll tell you what, I've done things in my life. I said, wow, what was I thinking? Have you ever done that? Amen, because when you've had time, amen, to settle down and think about it, you think and say, what in the world was I thinking? Because you can take a thought, amen, that is early perceived or conceived, amen, and before you hear the conclusion, amen, as the writer said, did you know that the Bible says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter, amen, everything that comes by our way, we ought to hear the conclusion of the whole matter, sat down and began to think about it and think it out. And a lot of times, your result will be different. That's in the natural. But I'm talking about spiritually here tonight. Amen. That we need to be positive thinkers. I'm telling you, I have been Amen, doing pretty good, and just get around some people, and they'll have me down before I leave, because everything that comes out of their mouth is negativity, amen, nothing going right, and that ain't all, they don't look for it to go right. You ever met people like that? I mean, man, they start out by telling you how bad that it is. Well, that's, that's all right. Amen. For someone to explain to you how bad it is, as long as they put in there just how great God is. Because how bad it is, and the worse that it is, amen, the greater that our God is. Now that makes me rejoice when someone says, Preacher, I've been through this week, amen, or this happened this week, or last month, and I've been going through this situation now for nine months. Amen, but glory to God. Amen, I see light at the end of the tunnel. Amen, my trust is in the living God. Amen, and He is going to bring me through. How many know tonight? Amen, that God, amen, will bring you through. I don't care what it is. Amen, God will bring you through. But we must maintain a positive attitude about it. Surround yourself and keep company with positive people. People that are happy. Huh? Now, I'm going to tell you something. Amen. Pleasant company is always better company to be around. Is that not true? People that laugh and Amen. Giggle. Amen. And they, and they, they, some people, they see the good in everything. I believe that's the way we ought to be. Amen. See the good in everything. Amen. And if you can, see the good in everybody. Because how easy is it to see the worst in people? You see, that's the nature of flesh. The flesh wants to see the worst in people. And the devil wants to point out the worst in people. But we as children of God should try our best. And we've all been guilty. Why, well, sure we have. Amen. I have. Amen. But we should all try to see, amen, the good that's in each and every individual. Amen. But it's all based upon the power, amen, of thought. And I'm telling you here tonight, dependent upon how you think about a situation, amen, will certainly, amen, determine, amen, your victory. How many wants victory here tonight? 
Amen. I want victory over my sickness. I want victory over my disease. I want victory in my life. Amen. In every aspect. Amen. I want to have victory. I was thinking, amen, about the land of Canaan. Amen. And we can think about it spiritually, and that is heaven. Amen. And what a beautiful place that's going to be. Paul said, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them, amen, that love him, but has been revealed unto us, amen, by his spirit, amen. I'm going to tell you something. It is truly tonight, spiritually, a land that floweth, amen, with milk and honey, amen. And I believe in just a little while, amen, we're going to get a sea, amen, that heaven, brother, take that we've been laboring for. Amen. I've known Brother Taylor for many, many years. Amen. As far as I know, he's always been in church, seemed like. Amen. Him and Sister Bessie. Amen. But one of these days, it'll all be over. Amen. Brother and Sister Dixon seem me like they've been in church all of their life. Amen. But one of these days, it's all going to be over. Amen. Your race will have ended. Amen. Your battle will have been fought. And you will hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. A crown of life you have won. But you've got to maintain the proper thought, the proper thinking, positive thinking in every bad situation because bad things happen to all of us. And I'm going to tell you something. You can allow a bad situation to destroy you if you think about it the wrong way. Canaan in the natural was a land that was filled with giants. The sons of Anak was there. Their cities were walled round about. That's where Jericho was, the most fortified city in the land of Canaan. There were Hittites there. There were Amalekites there. There were Jebusites there. There were Amorites there. And they covered the whole land. And they were a mean and strong group of people. And they occupied the land. But there wasn't but one problem with that. God gave it to Abraham. We've been going through it in Sunday school. Amen. And the title deed. Amen. To that Middle Eastern province over there. Amen. From Egypt. Amen. To Syria. Amen. On the other side of Jordan. God gave it all. Amen. To them. But it was occupied by the enemy. I want you to understand tonight, amen, as we attempt, amen, to go through this wilderness land, amen, in order to get to that heavenly Canaan, there's going to be a battle, amen, you're going to face walled cities, you're going to face the spiritual Amalekites, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and there's going to be giants arise in your life, in other words, you're going to have problems, amen, everybody, and sometimes most of our problems are just little things, amen, but every now and then, there'll be a giant problem, arise in your life. Amen. It's far greater than anything you've ever encountered in your life. Amen. Sure. Amen. David has slain a bear. Amen. And a lion. Amen. But buddy, there was a giant who rose up. Amen. In his life. Amen. But you know what brought him down? Amen. The power. Amen. Of thought. You know what David did? He thought about Amen. He was thinking right. Amen. And when he walked up to that nine and a half foot giant, he took out that slain. Amen. And that one stone. Amen. And he let it rip. 
Amen. It sunk the forehead of that giant. You know why? Amen. Because of positive thinking. You know what he began to do? He began to think about how that God delivered, amen, the lion into his hand. He began to think about, amen, how that God delivered the bear into his hand. And he said, this uncircumcised, amen, Philistine shall be no different. Amen. I'm talking about the power of thought. Canaan was inhabited with the enemy. And there came a time to possess or take the land. And the Bible says in Numbers chapter 13, verse 1, 2, and 3, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Seeing thou men that they may search the land of Canaan. Did you know this world is spiritual Canaan to us? And it is filled with problems. Is there anybody in here don't have a problem? <laughs> they lot of people think I got a problem. That ain't really the kind of problem I'm talking about. I'm talking about problem problems. I would venture to say that we all in here have problems of some nature. Well, sure we do. Amen. But I'm glad tonight that I know who the problem solver is. And the Bible says that the Lord commanded Moses, says, send down men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. He already gave it to them. He gave it to Abraham and his descendants. He said, it's yours. I don't care who's there. Jebusite, Hittite, Amorite, Amalekite, sons of Anak. It doesn't make any difference. The land is yours. I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall you send a man, every one a ruler among them. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, send them from the wilderness upon all those men who were heads of the children of Israel. And there were twelve men that was selected by the men Moses. And he gathered them together. He said, now, gentlemen, this is what I want you to do. In order to get to Canaan, they had to cross Jordan. That was the first obstacle, but they crossed it. And he said, when you get over there, some scholars believe that they divided up, and some went north, some went south, some went east. Some went west, but anyway, he said, I want you to spy out the land. And when you get over there, see, now the Lord already knew what was over there. But he wanted them to know what was over there. That they might understand, in order to possess the land, you got to have him. Now I want you to know tonight, the lost man and the lost woman... Before you can ever get to heaven, you got to have him. Is that not true? He said, now men, when you get over there, go throughout the land, see if it's a good land, see if they got wood there, see about the cities, see what type of people are there, whether they be strong or whether they be weak. And he said, by the way, when you get over there, I want you to check out the fruit of the land. And I want you to bring back some examples of the fruit. And the Bible says they went over there and they spent 40 days and 40 nights. They saw that great towering city of Jericho. They saw there truly that there were giants, plural, in the land. And that the people was not feeble, but they were strong. 
And the land was eat up with the inhabitants thereof. How many know tonight anything good you got to fight for? Amen. Anything good. I'm going to tell you something. Going to heaven is not easy. Oh, no. Not like a lot of these silver tongue preachers are preaching. Going to heaven, amen, means that you've been put on a journey. Amen. And along that journey, as was the man that fell among thieves, there's dangers in this journey. There's sicknesses in this journey. There's diseases in this journey. Amen. And there's all kinds out there that will do you harm. You better watch your back. <laughs> you better watch your back. These people out there are stab you in the back. I'm not talking about with a regular knife. I'm talking about that one that comes out of their mouth. Come on now, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. You got to. That's what the Bible says to be vigilant, which means to watch, be sober, be alert of your surroundings, because we are surrounded by the enemy. Well, that's the way Canaan was. Now. Now, one of the ways that Moses got Israel to come out of Egypt was that he promised them. Now, they were in harsh bondage in Egypt. They had taskmasters placed over them. They were beaten with whips. They worked them from daylight to dark. And here comes this preacher. He says, hey, how'd you like to get out of this mess? <laughs> Man, ain't it wonderful when you get out of messes? Some of you might be in a mess right now. Tell you, you might be ready to get in that mess out here. Woo! But I found out there's messes everywhere. Ain't that right? Well, sure they are. Amen. There's problems everywhere. Amen. But Moses commanded them, said, I want you to find out everything about the land that you may know these things and bring back, amen, the fruit thereof. And they went down by the brook, I believe that's Shoal, and man, they seen this, these vineyards, amen, and they, they got a pot or a cluster of grapes, amen, they put up on a staff that two men carry, and, and one cluster is believed, amen, to weigh approximately 12 pounds for just one cluster of grapes. It was truly a land that floweth with milk and honey. See, one of the ways that Moses kind of got those people, he said, now listen, you're in a mess down here in Egypt, but the Lord spoke to me and told me to bring you out of here, and I'm going to take you to a land that flows with milk and honey. Now, I'm gonna, it's a land like you can only dream about. And sure enough, they saddled up. They didn't have horses, but they girded themselves up. And they followed the man Moses. And God's intention was that they were to go out into the wilderness after that first Passover night that they celebrated in Egypt to celebrate their deliverance, that they were to go out into the wilderness. And they were going to worship God for a few days. And then God's intention was that they would march straight on to Jordan, cross over, and possess the land. But it didn't work out that way. Now, when they come up to where they was close to crossing over, this land was there. Moses summoned the spies, sent them over, amen, to bring back a report to him and to the children of Israel. Well, here they come. Man, they had this staff up on their shoulders, and man, this big cluster of grapes. And the Bible says, I believe in verse 23 or 24, I'm down in the chapter of Numbers, chapter 13. And they came unto the brook of Eshcol, and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes. And they bear it between two upon the staff. 
and they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. Man, it's just, I mean, it is a wonderful land. Verse 24 says this. The place was called the Brook Espo because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel had cut down from thence. Now jump down to verse 27. And they came back with the report, man, they should have been shouting all the way. When you hear of a good report, you ought to be happy. When you hear somebody being blessed, that ought to bless you. And we should always, as James said, pray one for another. And the Bible says that they told him, speaking to Moses, and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely you told us the truth. Surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. We got the proof that what God said to Moses is every word the truth. But listen what happens. Verse 28. Nevertheless, nevertheless is a big long word that just means but. That's all that it means. And there, there's people like that. You can't give them no good news. But this. Or about that. Uh, as I heard one preacher say, that's what billy goats do. They just but. Uh, but how many of those we're not goats? Huh? We are sheep. That's exactly right. Amen. Who have a shepherd whose name is Jesus. Amen. That'll lead us. Amen. By the still waters. He'll lead us into. Amen. The green pastures. David said in Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. He maketh me to lie down. Amen. In green pastures. Amen. He leads me. Amen. Beside the still waters. But I'm talking about we are sheep people. Amen. We're not goats. Amen. The each ten cans and all of that sort of thing. Amen. And every time you try to tell somebody something, amen, they're spiritual goats. All they know how to do is drop their head and say, but this. Amen. And but that. You know what it is? Amen. It's negative thinking. Amen. But better we need to understand. Amen. The power. Amen. Of thinking right. And the power. Amen. A fault and being optimistic in every situation that arises in our life. I don't care how dark it is. I don't care how bad the report is. I'm telling you, we serve a God. I said we serve a God. Amen. That's able. Amen. To turn things around. Amen. And make it right. But they said, nevertheless, the people. Be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled. What were they thinking? God already knew that. God knew every soul that was in the land of Canaan, of every tribe, no matter who it was, He knew every city, its construction. And its population. You see, God already knows about your situation. In fact, there's nothing you can tell him. We get out and pray sometimes. We pray to him like he's a dummy. We really do. Oh, Lord, did you know I need a brand new pair of shoes? Oh, Lord, don't you know I, I, I need this? Lord, you don't know. He already knows. The Bible says, even he said, now that is true, let your request be made known unto the Lord, and ask, and it shall be given you. But the Bible teaches us, amen, that he knows our need before we ever ask. But we pray like he don't know, like we're telling, like we're telling him something new. Well, Lord, did you know this? Or did you know that? If I was the Lord, I'd hang up on you. Uh, and if you insulted my intelligence like that, I'd just go ahead and hang up on you. 
and let you pray as long as you want to, and your prayer wouldn't leave the room. Look at someone say, I'm glad he ain't God. <laughs> well, ain't you? I'm just, I'm just being honest with you. That's probably what I do. You see, that ain't the way the Lord is. He's merciful. He's gracious. And the Bible says he's plenteous in mercies and in truth. But these spies come over, these twelve, and said, Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled. Evidently, they saw Jericho. And very great, and moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea. Man, you go to the top of the mountains, there's people. You go down to the beach, you got people down there. Man, I just don't know where we're going to go. You go into the city, and it's walled all the way around about. What do you mean? The Lord gave us a place where these people already live. And that's just what he did. I mean, there were people scattered throughout Canaan. Why? Because it was a fertile land. A land that flowed with milk and honey. But God had given it past tense. He had already given it to the children of Israel. Did you know that God has already given you heaven? The question is, is whether you take it or not. I mean, I could reach in my pocket and pull out $10 and give it to you. Huh? But you've got to reach out and get it, don't you? Well, sure you do got to reach out and get it. And then you become owner of that piece of money. That's the way heaven is. See, when he went to Calvary, he gave heaven to everybody. All of your children, all of my children, all of our family and friends, and even to the stranger, he's given them heaven. He certainly has. But they have not taken it. You have to possess the land. Which means you've got to take the land. What he was trying to get across to these people, they were done with it, man. I mean, they were just flat out done. He was trying to give these dummies this beautiful land and he would deal with the inhabitants once they understood that. But the Bible says the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, dwell in the mountains, Canaanites, dwell down by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Verse 30. But watch this. Out of those 12 spies, two of them were thinking about it. They understood the power of of positive thinking. Now, when you think positively, then what that does, that exerts your faith that you have. Therefore, positive thinking will exert your faith, and you will begin to exercise your faith, and then you'll be walking in the wheel of Almighty God. And when you exert faith, amen, and that faith is put into action and you begin to move, then God begins to smile. How many would like to make God smile? Amen. Faith in action will put a smile on the face of God. Amen. And you know what else it does? It draws His direct attention, amen, to you. Amen. He'll bring heaven's attention, amen, to your need. Amen. If you have a positive thought. Amen. If you think positively and then you begin to react upon that thought. Amen. That'll bring you the miracle that you need in your life. Caleb was such a man. Now, no doubt there were ten others. They were outnumbered. Joshua and Caleb. They were two Young men here. And they were outnumbered by the ten. The majority said, no, 
It is true the land floweth with milk and honey. Here's the grapes. But there are giants in the land. And they begin to say, I'll tell you what's going to happen. If we go over there, we'll be defeated. Our children will become prey to them. And by doing that, God became angry. But listen to the positive thinking of a man whose thoughts was upon God. And the Bible says, And Caleb stealed the people. And he saw what was going on. He saw that the people was receiving this evil report. He saw that they were paying attention to, amen, this negative thinking, amen, from these ten spies that had zero faith. How many knows tonight we cannot operate on zero faith? Amen to God. You've got to muster up in the bowels of your spirit. Amen. That faith that was dealt to every man. Amen. And exercise it and put it into action. And when you begin to think, you must think right. And you must think positively. And when you begin to think in that manner, I am telling you that the power of God, amen, will be unleashed in your life. And then you can see miracles. And God will heal your body. Amen. And whatever it is that you need, we serve a God that is able. That was the type of man, that was the character of man that Caleb was. And the Bible says, and we know that he heard all of this negativity, amen, from those other ten spies, amen, that had zero faith. And they saw the grapes. They saw the pomegranates. They saw that the land flowed with milk and honey, amen, but they looked beyond the good, and they began to see the bad. They saw the sons of Anak. They saw the giants and the walled cities, and they had already determined that we're not able. But I'm here to tell you, amen, tonight that we serve a God that is able. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. We need some people like Caleb, amen, that's got the same spirit that Caleb had, amen, the same thought process that he had. And the Bible says, and Caleb stealed the people. And Brother Wolfers turns, he said, shut up. That's what I would have said. Huh? They came to me with a bunch of negative stuff. I said, just shut up. That's my word. Huh? But Caleb was more distinguished than me, huh? more eloquent than me. And the Bible says that Caleb stealed people. And I mean the same thing. Say amen. And Caleb stealed the people before Moses. He said, let us. Go up at once and possess. You see, what God's got for you is not handed to you on a silver platter. Uh -uh. That's not the way God works. He don't work that way with salvation. He don't work that in another aspect of our lives. Amen. But God expects us, amen, to rise up, amen, with the spirit of Caleb, amen, and steal the people, amen. And he said, let us, amen, go up at once, amen, and possess, amen, possess means to reach out and take the land. He wanted them to know, he said, God gave it to us, God gave it to us by the mouth of his preacher Moses, amen, I'm going to lead you to a land, amen, that floweth with milk and honey, and let us go up right now. Amen. Not tomorrow, not 40 years from now, but let us go up and possess it. For he said, we Somebody say we. It's not all about the preacher. It's not all about the deacon. It's not all about the choir leader. Amen. But he said, for we are well able to overcome. What are you thinking is my thought. What are you thinking? Caleb, you know what he's thinking about? 
man, they just came out of Egypt. They had taskmasters with whips watching over them, laying lashes upon their backs, even killing some of them. You remember the story that time Moses got in trouble. He went out and he saw an Egyptian, a man harming a Hebrew, and Moses killed him. Amen. And buried him in the sand. And he had to flee Egypt. Amen. He left Egypt, went to the land of Midian, and abode there for 40 days, married the, the, the daughter of the Midianite priest. Amen. He herded sheep for 40 years. Amen. Until one day, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost, buddy. Until one day, he looked upon the heights of Mount Sinai, and he saw a sight like he never saw. Being 80 years old, he's seen a lot in his time. Spent 40 years in the land of Egypt. Amen. Another 40 years. Amen. Tending the sheep of Jethro, his father-in-law. But buddy, that day, that day when he looked to the top of Sinai and he saw that fire, glory to God. He saw that fire burning bright like no other fire. He saw that bush. Amen. That was consumed. And the Bible says he turned aside to see the sight. And buddy, when he went up to that great light, that fire, that bush that burned, amen, he began to think right. He was a positive thinker. He wanted to know what made that bush different than anything else. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. We, the people of God, we're different than any other bush out there. You better hear me. We don't walk like them. We don't talk like them. We don't live like them. We don't dress like them. There's something peculiar about us. Amen. We are glory. We are the children of the living God. Woo! That's what I think. Woo! What are you thinking? Caleb no doubt looked at those other ten and thought, what are you fellas thinking? Let us go up at once, for we are well able. He had the same spirit that Shadrach had, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. They were men. They were thinkers. Amen. And they thought right. It wasn't always politically correct. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. The children and the church of the living God, we can never be politically correct. Amen. I'll tell you what we are. We are biblically correct. Is that not true? Yes, we are. Amen. If the Bible says it, I'm going to do it. If the Bible says it, I'm going to believe it. And if the Bible says it, I'm going to preach it, brother. Line upon line and precept upon precept. Here, live on there, live. Amen. The Word of Almighty God. Well, that's what I think about it. God's looking for some positive thinkers. He's looking for people, amen, that don't know what negativity is. Everything's positive. And we need to be, as I said earlier, optimistic in every situation, whether it be sickness, disease, or whatever it may be. Amen. Understanding and knowing, amen, that we serve the God of Caleb. We serve the God of Jacob. We serve the God of Abraham and that of Isaac. We serve the God of Samson. Amen. We serve the God of Joseph. Amen. Yet in prison, he still had a positive attitude. Amen. When he was sold by his brothers, he he maintained a positive attitude. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. What are you thinking? And the Bible says that the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel that day. And he turned them aside. From going over to the land that flowing with milk and honey, he turned them. And they wandered in a circle for 40 years, as the singers would tell you. I'm going to tell you something. 
thinking wrong will take you in the wrong direction. Thinking wrong will curse you. The Bible says that God's anger was so kindled that he spoke to Moses and told him to turn aside and led those people simply to be a million plus. Amen. And they wandered around in the desert, having war after war after war. They would at times journey into land that had no water. And God would give them water out of the rock. They had no bread because they had no harvest. And he sent them from heaven angels' food. He indeed, he indeed kept them, but something happened. Because of their wrong thinking, he looked at Moses and said, you tell these people, those children that they said would be prey to the giants, the Amalekites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the sons of Anak. Did you tell them? You tell them? They're going to be the ones that inherit the promised land. But the rest of you, because of your unbelief, you're going to wander around in the wilderness. And you're going to wander around until every last one of you die. What were they thinking? What were they thinking? Did you tell them, Moses, thus saith the Lord, you're going to die in the wilderness. And for 40 long years, they wandered and traveled in a circle. Until the last one died. Save Joshua and Caleb. For the Bible says they had another spirit. You better watch what kind of spirit you get a hold of. Better get a hold of the right spirit. And the right spirit thinks right, walks right, talks right, dresses right. Baptized right, got the Holy Ghost right. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? And finally, after 40 years, their carcasses laid in the wilderness. And then God said, It's time now. They're all dead. Save my servant, Joshua. He said, Moses, you're now 120 years old, 40 years in Egypt, 40 years in Midian, and 40 years in the wilderness. One of the greatest, if not the greatest of all biblical times was Moses. Never a man spoke to God like Moses did. Face to face, the Bible said. One day, knocked on old Moses, and said, Moses, go up on Sinai. I made the believe it was that very spot where he first met him. Perhaps the very place where the bush burned with fire and was not consumed. When Moses turned aside the sea, and the Lord spoke, he said, put off your shoes. For the ground thou standest is holy ground. Perhaps 40 years later, he brought him back to that very spot. Moses, I want you to look yonder. All of the land of Canaan. But he said, you can't go. And the Bible says Moses died that day. And God buried him on the mountain. But it wasn't over yet. There was a man by the name of Joshua that came out of Egypt with him that had the same spirit that Caleb had that was a right thinker. God called him and said, Joshua, 
my servant Moses is dead. Paraphrasing, now you are stepping into his shoes. Go forward and take the people over and claim what I gave to them. Not just 40 years ago, but when my servant Abraham left the land of earth, and I gave it to him. It's time to possess the land. Moses, Joshua got the priest, took him down to the brink of Jordan, took the Ark of the Covenant, and across they went. For it parted, and they went on dry ground. And from that day forward, Joshua started his conquest. He knew what was in Canaan. The giants, Amorites, Hittites, Jericho. And he mounted his army at the command of the Lord, and he began to sweep through the land and took and possessed what God had given. What are you thinking? Are you thinking positively tonight? Or are your thoughts negative? Well, I, I don't know if God can heal me or not. I don't know if God is going to make a way or not. I, I just don't know. I just don't know about anything. That's the wrong attitude to have. But we need to have a positive attitude. I told you on New Year's night this year, 2016, I want to maintain an optimistic attitude. I want to see our people healed, people filled with the Holy Ghost, our families saved. That's what I want to see. And I'm optimistic about it. 2015 is gone. It's behind us, and there's nothing we can do about it. But Paul said, reach in for it. Those things was lie before.